So welcome everybody to my very first actual review type thing. Before we begin, quick info about me and why I bought the skateboard to begin with. First of all, I'm not a skater. I've never ridden a skateboard in my life. This, the first time I got on this was pretty much the first time I got on a skateboard. Electric skateboards have become more and more popular in recent months and years. I'm starting to see a lot of people riding these things. No out there, but on the interwebs. It looked like fun. Initially, I wanted to buy a boosted board. Uh, the new version of the boosted board is gonna take forever until I was able to get one and shipping costs and customs and stuff because they don't have a distribution network over here in Europe. It... Luckily, I found this company called Evolve. Evolve is an Australian uh, company. But the good thing about Evolve is that they have a distribution network set up pretty much all over the world. So you can actually buy these things without having to worry about customs and shipping costs and all that kind of stuff. Evolve has been producing electric skateboards for years now. This is the GT model. It's the newest version of their electric skateboards. The main difference is this is a lot more power, um, talking about the, the motors than the old ones had. This has two motors, the old ones only had one. There's some other changes, a bigger battery and stuff like that. So the ones you're probably gonna buy today are these GT models. Of those GT models, you can get two different ones. You can get this one, which is the bamboo version. You can also get it as a carbon board. The carbon's gonna be a lot more, a lot more stiff. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna flex as much. The carbon board is going to be a little bit longer. It has a larger battery as well, and I think a couple of kilometers on the top speed. Nevertheless, we're going to focus on the bamboo board. They are almost identical. If you're thinking about buying any of these, if you're thinking about buying the bamboo or the GT, this is probably going to be helpful no matter what, because most of the stuff here is the same on both boards. Sort of. This thing will take you almost anywhere. It can climb 25 degree hills. It has regenerative braking, so not only does it have brakes, which is, it also recharges the batteries as you brake. This is obviously not gonna mean you have infinite power, but it helps make it more practical. And especially in this setup with the AT wheels on, which is these big chunky off-road tires, you can go pretty much anywhere. With its 6.5 amp hours battery, it recharges in about three and a half hours. That's sort of okay. You can get a fast charger for the board. That's not gonna be included when you buy it, but you can purchase a fast charger and that will do the job in 80 minutes instead of three and a half hours. I don't think three and a half hours is that big a deal. And if it really is a big deal to you, you can buy the fast charger and you'll get it done in 80 minutes. When talking about practicality, the one thing that really lets this board down, which is something a lot of the competitors do not have, or rather do have, is the fact that this board is not waterproof. That is going to be a big turnoff for many people. That's going to be a big problem to many people who want to buy this for their daily commute because, you know, guess what? Sometimes it's going to rain. It's not too big a problem for me. I live in Spain and I live in the most southern part of Spain. We have about 300 days of sunshine here a year, so we don't see that much rain. So it's not a big problem for me, and I don't have to use it for commuting. So I think in terms of practicality, if you want to use it for daily commuting and you live someplace where it occasionally rains, and especially if you're going to be reliant on getting to work or wherever you're going on this thing, you might want to look at alternatives and more specifically, you might want to look at boosted ports because the new generation of those are actually waterproof or water resistant. I've seen people driving through heavy rains with those and they'd be fine. So it's practical, but talking about weather, the Volt boards are definitely not the most practical. Yeah, very. When I say that this is fast, I mean it's ridiculously fast. That's both a, a, a pro and a con, because this thing on street tires will do about 40. That's 40 kilometers an hour. 
that's somewhere around 23, 24 miles per hour. That's very, very, very quick on a, on a skateboard. Whatever you do, if you buy one of these and you haven't ridden an electric skateboard before, please do not start off on GT. It's, it's very fast. I mean, I put this thing on slow, the slowest mode it can go, and the first time I, I flew off it. This is gonna go horribly wrong. Yep. That's another thing talking about the speed of this thing. The acceleration is ridiculous. I would say that the acceleration on this is not very refined, it's very sudden. Some people might like that, I don't know, but to me it, it seems a little... To me it's not a good thing. It feels less refined than what I've seen from other skateboards, especially comparing it to something like the boosted board. This feels a lot less refined, a lot less... It's not as smart, it's not as well engineered, it's not as cleverly built and designed, but it'll go like hell. And yeah, you can you can pull up to anybody with a boosted board, doesn't matter what version. If you have this one, you will you'll blitz them, you'll you'll fly away. Um, they won't be able to catch you at all. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you can use it for long journeys. What's going to give out first? It's not the skateboard, it's not the, the it's not overheating motors, it's not it's not running out of, of juice, it's going to be your legs running out of juice. This thing will go 35 kilometers on a charge, that's 19 miles. That's very far on a charge. You could go on a very, very long trip, and especially if you have the fast charger, you could recharge it in 80 minutes, so you could go 35 kilometers in one direction and and you know, take a break for 80 minutes and then drive all the way back. I think, you know, your legs and your body is what's gonna give out first, not, not the board. So, is it good for long journeys? Not really. I mean, if I had to go 30 whatever my, uh, kilometers, I wouldn't take this. I would take my motorcycle or, or, or car. I, I wouldn't go on this, but you might very well never actually you know, go with the full distance this thing can go. But nevertheless, it's nice to know that it can go that far. Um, that means you don't have to worry about, you know, running out of uh, juice. I also want to point out, talking about long journeys and talking about your legs probably be, you know, the part that gives out first. Riding on these AT wheels is going to help a lot. Uh, when you ride on these smaller street wheels, they are a lot. They're very, very hard, and you're gonna feel the, you know, the, the road. You're gonna feel bumps and 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 that kind of stuff. So I think for long journeys, definitely want to go with the AT wheels. No. Okay, so I wish I could say yes here, but I can't. It's not. It's not that it's badly made, um, and it's not like there's. I mean, mine is running just fine. I have no issues with it, but it's not well made. It's not, it's not very refined. It's not, I mean, you can see the, the power button is, you know, the cutout for the power button doesn't actually fit the, you know, the power button. It's, it's, it's just a very rough and weird cutout. And that means that mud and dust and water for that matter will, will go in there. You can see the seal around the battery case is very inconsistent. I know this thing is not waterproof, but designing stuff like that the right way and, and having a seal all the way around and having the cutout for the power button and the, and the charge port to actually fit and be sealed off, it's gonna help a lot if you happen to find yourself in a little wet weather. There's a tiny little um, crack in the wood in uh, the front of the board or where one of the bolts go through. Um, I don't think that's going to be a massive issue, but and it doesn't look like that bolt has actually been tightened too much by the uh, by the people at Evolve. So, I mean, looking at stuff like that, it, it 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 looks like it's not it's not built with great care. Comparing it to something like the boosted board, this is definitely not as well made. I gotta stress, I haven't ridden the boosted board, but I've, I've looked into it extensively and it is built a hell of a lot better than this thing, which might come as a surprise because they're not that different and the price is not that different. They're almost priced exactly the same. It's, it's not built very well, no. It's definitely not built poorly. It's not a, it's not a bad product at all. It's put together, let's say it's decent, decently put together. That's what I would say. 
Maybe. So this is a this is a tricky one. Is it easy to ride? Well, if you're an experienced skateboarder, then you're gonna have an advantage. If you are an experienced electric skateboard rider, yeah, it's probably gonna be pretty easy. For someone like me, completely green, brand new to this thing, and no, not really. It's not easy to ride, but it's definitely not. I don't. I didn't feel like it was you know something I just couldn't do at all. The fact that you can put this thing on slow mode and you have the option of 80 wheels which makes it, you know, you get a little more confidence that you can, you know, that you won't fall off it and, and when you hit a pothole or something. That does mean that, that you get the grips of it quite quickly. But I would say the, the learning curve for this thing is that it's, it's quite easy to sort of to get on it and, and get going for the first time, but you're definitely not going to you know, go out there and ride 30 kilometers an hour and do, you know, like massive slides and, and, and all that kind of stuff. That takes some time. It takes some practice to, to get your balance right and be confident that when you lean that the board is going to turn and that you're going to have the grip that you need. It's not difficult if you haven't ridden anything like this before, if you're completely new to skateboards and electric skateboards, don't be afraid of getting on one of these things. It's definitely something you can learn. It's not that difficult. When you get on it for the first time, you can go out and ride immediately. What I will say is, it will take you a couple of days at least before you feel confident enough to take this out amongst, well, crowded places, cars, people, bicycles, that kind of stuff. One thing is that you can stand on it and keep your balance and you can pull the trigger, you can start moving, but being able to slow down even with the brakes this thing has and not fall off and being able to sort of foresee what's going to happen and, and spot potholes or a curb or, or something like that. So I would say when you first get on this thing, if you're brand new to it, do it someplace remote. What I did was I took this board about 10 minutes or so back here. There's a, a bunch of pretty much deserted roads, but they're good, good roads, good tarmac. Um, so I could go there, no cars, no people, um, and I could, um, yeah, you know, no, nobody to laugh if I uh, fall off. It's gonna take a little, it's gonna take a little while. It's not something you're just gonna, you know, just gonna jump on it, put it in GT, and then boom, you go. Oh, hell no. So this thing starts at 1,399 euros here in Spain. That's a lot of money for a skateboard. You can get a small old second-hand car for that kind of money. Looking at the materials, looking at what's, you know, what's here and comparing that to the competition, comparing that to especially again the boost board, you're paying for extra performance, you're paying for higher top speed, longer range and a much faster acceleration and maybe paying for the option that you can replace the wheels which is i'll i'll give it that it's a very nice thing that you can put these chunky tires on that alone does that justify that this thing costs about the same as a boosted board considering the build quality and and the look of the thing and the fact it's not waterproof and the fact that the remote is very flimsy. I would say it's probably a little overpriced. If this thing were about a thousand, then sure, yeah. Fourteen hundred for the cheapest? Mmm, a little, little steep. Hell yeah! I mean, yes, yes, I can recommend it. Do you like the idea of riding on a skateboard with, you know, motors on the back, not having to kick? Do you love attention? Do you love you know, being out there, having everybody looking at you and what the hell you are standing on and how the hell you're going up a hill without kicking. Do you want a very, a very reasonably priced vehicle to get to and from work, at least when it's not raining? Do you want to have a massive amount of fun? If you can say yes to any of those, then yeah, I can recommend it, definitely. What I think is the most interesting part of electric skateboards in general, not just the Volvo board, but any of them, is that it can be a legitimate, real, realistic way of getting from A to B. If you can go from your home to your office and from your office to your home, and you that way eliminate either riding a cab or an Uber or driving your own car or a motorcycle or a moped or driving a bus or a train or anything like that, 
you're going to save money in the long run, you're going to have a hell of a lot more fun doing it, it's going to be faster, especially in big congested cities, and it's going to be so much better for the environment. So that, that's what I think is truly, really, really interesting about these, these boards. I think, you know, they can actually be a real legitimate way of getting from A to B. The Evolve board, however, is not exactly the best example of this, mainly because it's not waterproof. Having a board that's not waterproof means that you can't rely 100% on it unless you live someplace where it never rains. And hell, I mean, even, I live in Spain and even here it rains from time to time, so I wouldn't rely 100% on it. The Evolve board is not the best board. If you truly want this for commuting, if you, read, if you want this from, to, you know, in order to go from A to B, so you can go from your home to your office or shopping or whatever it might be, if you're buying this to eliminate a bus ride or a, a, a car ride or something like that, then no, I will not recommend the Evolve board. Definitely not. There are better alternatives for that and yes, Boosted is probably the number one. If you want an electric skateboard for fun, however, yeah then I'll say Evolve should probably be your first place that you're gonna look. This is gonna beat every single electric skateboard out there on the sheer amount of fun. Sheer amount of fun, this is it. This is what you want. If you have any questions, if you have any questions on this board, electric skateboards in general, my experiences with this and anything I didn't cover in this video, you are more than welcome to leave a comment down below and um, I'll make sure you get an answer. And hopefully if you enjoy this kind of thing, if you're thinking about buying one of these boards and this is the first video of, well, at least of me in it, and you are looking for some more content with that kind of stuff in it, then check out some of my other videos. I've done a few where I'm either talking about this or writing it or building a wall mount for it and there's tons of that stuff. There's gonna be some links down in the description and I'm probably also gonna annotate two videos right about here maybe? Somewhere around here. These two, have a look at them. They're also about the Evolve skateboard. If you're interested in Evolve skateboards, this is the area.